Hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. It's time for an update on the latest with what's going on in the tropics. We've got a lot of activity out there to talk about. Checking the audio, making sure it's good. It looks like everything's okay. See a lot of people are joining in. There's a lot to talk about with what Hurricane Laura, now Hurricane Laura, is going to do. We have hurricane uh, watches and uh, uh, warnings in place now for the uh, Texas coastline that we're watching very closely, and uh, we're going to talk all about that. First off, a lot of sunshine here in northwest San Antonio. Things pretty quiet. Not seeing any rain on radar. Just want to give a quick update on us. Not seeing any really any rain for our region as well. It's going to be a drier day. So let's talk about Marco first. Marco is still a tropical depression. It's out there. You see that little bit of a spin in the atmosphere right off the Louisiana coastline, kind of south of Marsh Island and southwest of Morgan City. If you don't know where Morgan City is, about right there. So uh, looking uh, pretty close to Morgan City, looking like it'll kind of brush up against that south Louisiana coastline. Now here's the thing. The remnants of Marco are going to be kind of hanging out here as Laura comes in. If Laura ends up ingesting Marco, in other words, the, the decaying Marco kind of gets swept up in Laura, that does not make a superstorm. I want to make sure everyone understands that. Uh, it, you know, that's a little bit of the Fujiwara effect, which we talked about yesterday at the 4 p.m. show. It doesn't make a mega storm. It just means that Marco has been kind of swept in to Laura. By the way, Marco now actually even a post-tropical storm, not even a tropical depression anymore. It really has kind of fallen apart. And you'll notice some of these um, watches and warnings that we have here down on the, uh, the Texas coastline, uh, this hurricane warning in place until 10 a.m. along the Texas and Louisiana coast. This is uh, also a tropical storm warning that we have in place for the Texas and Louisiana coast in blue. That's not for Marco. That's for Laura. Laura right now located north of the Yucatan Peninsula, expected to sweep its way up towards the north and west, uh, and then eventually strengthen up to a Category 3 hurricane. That is a major hurricane that could make landfall, looks like the center of the cone, right at Sabine Pass. Now, what exactly does that mean for the Texas coastline? Well, it means that we could have some significant storm surge in some spots, some damaging wind, very damaging wind with that hurricane force. Also, another risk with these, with these storms, multiple tornadoes, especially when you get close to the eye and on the right side of the eye, not necessarily to the east. It's on the right side from the direction of the storm. Uh, now, if this storm does take, remember, it can go up the west side of the uh, cone too. Don't think it'll just go straight up the center. If it goes up that west side, we could be talking about significant storm surge up into Galveston Bay, all the way up along the Texas coastline and the Louisiana coastline and up Sabine Pass and into the Sabine River. So all important things to note. I'm saying this because I want to make sure that we notify our friends and family in Houston. Houston's very close to us. We want to make sure all of our friends and family are safe. Areas closer on towards Corpus Christi, not as much of a concern, but rip currents are going to be very high here over the next few days, so getting into the water could be dangerous. So, you know, it's going to be best that we don't head down to the beach and go for a swim uh, over the next few days. It's not a good idea just because the rip currents are going to be high, and the surf is going to be pretty high, too, down towards Corpus. The Gulf of Mexico kind of acts like a giant bathtub. You put a hurricane, even if it's on the other side of the Gulf, it's still going to impact us right here on the Texas coast with a little bit higher surf than normal. So something to keep in mind there, guys. Just go ahead and uh, you know notify your friends and family that may be over towards Houston. Here in San Antonio, we're not expecting really any rain from this. I know a lot of people are wanting some rainfall. We're actually going to be on the drier side of this storm, and we're not expecting really any rain from Laura. So if you're wanting rain, I'm sorry to, to let you know that uh, rain just doesn't look like a good possibility for us from this system. I saw a few people asking about it, and I hope that answers your, um, answers your questions. Uh, so, yeah, 
Category 3 storm could be still a Category 1 storm by the time it makes it into the Alexandria area, a tropical storm by the time it moves over Texarkana and uh, Shreveport, and then Little Rock, it could even still be a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical depression still when it hits eastern Kentucky. So this is a pretty significant storm here, taking a similar path to Rita, but that does not mean that the impacts will be the same as Rita. Every storm has different impacts. Never forget that. Um, Hurricane Camille it hit the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And you know, Katrina hit the Mississippi Gulf Coast in a similar area. Hurricane Camille put a 24-foot storm surge. Katrina did a 28-foot. Camille was a Cat 5. Katrina was only a Cat 3 at landfall. So you can never uh, compare the, the type of impacts you're going to have from a storm to another because all the impacts tend to be different with the storms depending on their speed of approach, the direction at which they approach to the coast, if they're coming at an angle or straight on. Um, a lot of geometry comes into play there as far as storm surge is concerned. And then also the shear that could be impacting the storm, the amount of rainfall. You think of Harvey. I'm not saying this is Harvey because it's not. The amount of rainfall with this storm is going to be significantly less. Someone mentioned on the Facebook Live yesterday, you know, could, uh, uh, I heard someone said it could be 30 inches of rain. We are not expecting that at all, uh, much less. I'm going to show you the seven-day forecast Ex expectations uh, for the rainfall for our friends in southeast Texas, and you'll see it is much lower. That is because this system has steering. Harvey didn't have much steering, so it kind of got stuck and sat over Houston for a while. This system is going to move quick. Notice Wednesday evening, it's uh, just off the coast. By Thursday morning, it's already getting closer towards central and uh, east Texas, and then it's, uh, or excuse me, central, central west Louisiana, central eastern parts of Texas. I'm not talking about central Texas. I want to make sure I, I let you all know that. But, you know, it's in northeast Texas by the time we get into uh, even Thursday evening. So very quick moving storm here. Um, we got the hurricane hunters out there flying the storm to gather more data. Their data helps to narrow that cone and make the forecast more precise and let us know exactly what's going on. They are, I grab this every time, but I'd love to be able to talk about this. They're dropping these into the storm. These drop signs gathers all sorts of meteorological data and uh, has the GPS located within it as well. This is called a drop sign. And they're dropping these into the storm to gather more information. Uh, right now, some of their, their data isn't coming in uh, through the system properly, so we're not seeing exactly all the information with their altitude, the flight time. That actually comes in live to our system. But in this flight, I've been watching on some other platforms as well that I track online with their flight data. And I've noticed that all the data isn't necessarily coming in as proper as it should be. So we'll continue to keep you updated on what they find. I want to show you something really interesting, though. This does not happen too often. Whenever the Air Force Reserve hurricane hunters come within the line of a possible landfalling storm, they will move their fleet. Typically, they fly out of Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi. You'll notice where their flight path came from today, Charleston, South Carolina. They'll take their C-130s and they'll move them to another location so that they are out of harm's way themselves. So right now they're flying from a little bit further of a distance, but still gathering that very important information to keep everyone updated. So why do we think the storm is going to go where it is going to go? Well, it's that upper level pattern that causes all of the steering, that area of high pressure that we've been talking about for more than a week, setting up over the western part of the Atlantic. Here's where Laura is right now over the northern Yucatan Peninsula, kind of just north of that, rather. You'll notice that as we head throughout the next few days, this area of high pressure kind of shoves it over, just as what's happening right now, and then sends it up closer towards Sabine Pass. That's that forecast path that we keep talking about. It'll make its way up to the north and then uh, really kind of make its way into Arkansas quickly. So, again, it's going to miss us. And you'll notice through the timeline here, I'm going to run us through future clouds and radar. We're kind of zoomed out from us, so the numbers are a little small, but you get the gist of things. 90s today, not any rain chances really for today as well. And then it's going to be kind of drier for tonight. But for Wednesday afternoon, we may see a few showers, and some of those may even be stemming from Laura. Here's the catch, though. It's very brief showers, and you're going to consider yourself real lucky if you see any rain uh, even at all. 
Uh, just about a 20% chance for rain there for Wednesday. There's Laura making landfall. Uh, this one model, this one weather model, this is just one of them, and there's tons out there. I mean, we're talking about all sorts of different models and ensembles, hundreds that uh, have different routes. This one model takes the storm right to the east of Galveston Bay, and it would put the highest impacts in Port Arthur and Beaumont, Orange, Texas areas. Um, so this is something we definitely, we don't want it to hit anywhere. But uh, for, for Texans, uh, this would be not so much of a good uh, model to, uh, to verify. So uh, that would be a major hurricane making landfall there. And notice how quickly it gets north. It's already stopped raining in those areas that had landfall. Let's see what time this model has landfall. Thursday at 2 a.m. By the time we get to 11 a.m. on Thursday, the storm is well to the north. Again, I don't expect the impacts to be similar to the storm I'm about to mention, but Katrina did not have much of a flooding issue. It was storm surge on the Mississippi Gulf Coast that made it so bad. And that surge that moved into Lake Pontchartrain caused the levees to break on the Pontchartrain side first and then into the city. Again, I don't expect this to be anything like that, but just letting you know, the speed at which this is moving north, that lets us know we're not going to have a flooding effect like what we had with Harvey. So don't, don't think that that's going to be the kind of thing we expect. This is going to be something that uh, causes more in the way of surge. Uh, I think surge could be a, a significant issue along the southeast Texas coast if this storm does kind of uh, keep this westerly path on the cone. Remember, the front right quadrant, that's where our significant storm surge is. I actually have a good graphic that describes that. And let me see if I can actually pull that up real quick, guys. Um, I'm seeing some questions about do they evacuate uh, inmates in Beaumont. I'm not sure. Uh, Yesi, I... I uh, I uh, am just not sure about that. I know a lot of people are evacuating, and I'm sure that they're going to make sure everybody in that area, in Beaumont, will be safe um, as this storm comes through. They're going to do their best to make sure everyone can be safe. Um, but whenever it comes to these systems, it's typically that front right quadrant that is the uh, most significant impacts. You know, just give me one second. I'm trying to find this graphic for you because it's a great explainer of this. We actually had a great, um, we had a mentor program that I was doing here at Kent's Five. And our, one of our students, Tony Gonzalez, uh, he actually built this graphic. Um, I gave him a little bit of guidance for it, but I mean, he did a phenomenal job uh, building this graphic. So let me see if I can find it for you. There it is. So this is kind of a quick explainer of what quadrants are more dangerous in a, in a storm. That front right quadrant has maximum storm impact. And you saw the area impacted by the front right quadrant would have been that, uh, that area that's near Port Arthur. If, if that model run verified, the Port Arthur area and kind of closer on towards Beaumont. The front left, significant storm surge but not as much as the front right. So over towards Galveston, if that model run verified, you know, they could still get significant storm surge, but not as much as the front right. The back right has significant wind, and the back left is typically weaker, but still dangerous. And kind of like the left side, that's going to be the part that impacts our area, South Texas, like the very far eastern counties. And again, that's the weaker side of the storm, which we like to, to hear. And so not as much impacts for us. That right side, though, that's where we have kind of more tornadoes, and um, that's, uh, that's going to be uh, what we'll be watching for our friends in Louisiana. Tawana says uh, San Antonio isn't getting anything but uh, the evacuees more than likely, and yeah, that's correct. Uh, I would expect uh, not really much other than um, e uh, evacuees in our area and maybe a brief shower or two. Um, and then I see Adrian says, what did you say those things are called? that the planes drop into the storm. Can you spell that, please? I'd like to look, look those up. How amazing. Yes, Adrian. I'm dropping it in right now. It's called a drop sound. Um, and I just dropped it in the comments as meteorologist Andrew Wilson. That's spelled D-R-O-P-S-O-N-D-E. 
This is a drop sound. So that's what the hurricane hunters drop in the storm to gather more information. All right, guys, we've just talked a lot about the tropics and a storm that's really not going to impact us here in San Antonio too much. But I wanted to give everyone an update just because of the, um, the way that southeast Texas could be impacted, and those are our friends and neighbors. But how much rain are we going to see over the next seven days? Let's talk a little bit about us here in south Texas. Not too much. The next seven days, bringing in less than a half of an inch of rain for everybody. Uh, you notice where a majority of that rain is going to be. It's going to be east of I-35, where we could see up to a quarter of an inch of rainfall, and that's about it. Take a look at the eight uh, or the seven-day forecast, showing that we'll see anywhere from about a uh, 10 to 30 percent chance over the next week. Today we're dry, a 20 percent chance for Wednesday, a 20 percent chance for Thursday. Friday only bringing a 10 percent chance. No rain for Saturday and just a 30 percent chance for rain on Sunday and Monday. Temperatures are going to be in the 70s to low, for lows and 90s to triple digits for highs. So I'm going to continue to keep everyone updated right here at a Ken's, uh, Ken's 5, of course, throughout today. Uh, we're going to have another update on Ken's 5 at noon. We should have some new data from the National Hurricane Center and possibly even an updated forecast track for you at that time. Be sure to tune in. I'll be on at noon with the latest update to the uh, forecast. And then Weather Chief Bill Taylor will be on at 4, 5, 6, and 10. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and we'll keep you updated on everything right here at Ken's 5.